Good morning, and welcome to Emanuel Lutheran Church from Tell City, Indiana, for our video chapel for the first Sunday in November. The first Sunday of every month, we pre-record a video chapel so that all our members may fully participate in the divine service where Christ comes to us through real words, with real water, with real body and blood, and real bread and wine to offer, give, and seal to us real forgiveness of sins, real life, and real salvation. Today, we transpose and celebrate All Saints Day. The saints are blessed in the eternal presence of our God. A great multitude from all tribes, peoples, and languages cry out, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, as you'll hear from Revelation 7. Faith-filled saints from every place and time, with unified voices, eternally magnify the Lamb of God. As beloved children, we too shall see him as he is, as St. John tells us in 1 John chapter 3. Joined with the throngs of angels and myriad of saints, we shall serve him day and night in his temple, as we hear in Revelation 7. And on our earthly tension, vacillating between saint and sinner, faith and doubt, sacred and profane. We earnestly seek Jesus to calm our fears, comfort our spirits, and forgive our sins. The Holy Spirit, through faith in Christ, propels us forward, fortifying us in word and sacrament to our eternal home. In the midst of our constant struggle as believers, we need to be blessed, and so we are. The poor in spirit, the meek, the hungry, the thirsty, the merciful, the pure, and the persecuted are all blessed and we most certainly inherit the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus promises us in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, the gospel for this day. May you be blessed through the hearing of Christ's word today. We especially invite us, if you are able and live in Tell City, to join us in person every Sunday morning. Our divine service begins at 10 a.m., but we also invite you to Sunday school at 8.45 that you might explore the scriptures. If you have any other questions, please contact us. If you live farther away, please check the links that are supplied here, that you might find a church home near you. And be blessed by Jesus, who draws near to you as true man and true God in real time, in a real place, through his real words spoken, through real forgiveness given you in his real word, real baptism, and the real supper that he lays before you. Blessed.
we begin. Where God made us saints by grace through faith in Jesus as infants, through the waters of holy baptism, washing us forgiven with Christ's blood, giving us his Holy Spirit that we might believe in him, knowing that God is our true Father, and we are truly his children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Psalm for All Saints is Psalm 149. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throat and to edge swords in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble ones with salvation. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and all places of one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Church in the West celebrates All Saints Day on November 1st. Today we transpose All Saints Day to the first Sunday in November. Our first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from Revelation to St. John chapter 7. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Ishakar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great number that no one could number, 
from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall neither hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual appointed for this day is from Revelation 7. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him, beloved. We are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is, and everyone who has thus hopes in him, purifies himself, as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each Sunday we read together a portion of our Lutheran confessions. I watch the small catechism as part. As the head of the family should teach in a simple way to his household, what is the fourth request of dear children to their dear Father in heaven? Give us this day our daily bread, what does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. The verse for the today is from Hebrews chapter 12. Alleluia, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for all saints. It's from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you 
When others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Having heard the word of our God, we confess the faith given to us in holy baptism, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father. From our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for the Feast of All Saints is from 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed that we shall what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Thus far our text. In Christ Jesus, our blessed Savior, your Christian friends. November 1st, the Christian Church in the West celebrates All Saints Day. Do you know any Lutheran saints? Or do you think saints? We are Lutherans. We don't have any saints. Yet if you turn to the front page of your hymnal, starting about Roman numeral 10, you'll find the church here mapped out for us. On page 11, we see a list of feasts and festivals that include the days that list saints. Turning to page 12, we find a year full of commemorations of people throughout the history of Christianity. Are these people saints? What makes a person a saint? According to the Roman Catholic theology, to be recognized as a saint, one must have lived an extraordinary, exemplary Christian life and died. After two years, that person's bishop can recognize that person as a servant of God. Then their works and writings are carefully examined, and a guild is formed to promote their sainthood. At some point, that individual is declared non-cultus, and their body is exhumed and examined, and relics are collected. When enough evidence is collected, the Pope will declare the individual heroic in virtue, and they will be given the title venerable. Prayer cards may be issued encouraging the faithful to pray to them. The next step is to be beautified. That is declared blessed on the evidence that the individual is in heaven for either being a martyr, martyr or confessor of the faith. If that person has not been martyred for the faith, and a miracle must be attributed to them praying to them, then they'll be declared a saint and canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. On the other hand, to be a saint in the Reformed Church, one must, not, must do or not do certain things. Some Reformed bodies call you a saint if you don't drink, smoke, or dress up on Halloween. Others call you a saint if you're successful, fill megachurches with members, write best-selling Christian books, on how to live according to successful lives, according to new discovered principles. To be a saint in Islam, one must live the five pillars of the Islamic faith. Confess there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Pray five times a day towards Mecca. Give alms for the poor Muslims. Fast during the month of Ramadan and make a trip to Mecca and Saudi Arabia at least once during their lifetime. The fastest path for Islamic sainthood is to die in a holy war, fighting the infidels, our non-Islamic peoples. To be a Hindu saint, one must live a perfect life or make extreme sacrifice. About 10 years ago, Ramvir Singh Baghel, who was 35 at that time of the Hami district in India, sliced off his tongue as an offering to the goddess Amba. Sacrifice made an instant deity in the local temple. To be a Latter-day Saint, according to Mormonism, is to live a moral life following the teachings of Joseph Smith, to have a burning in the bosom, and to ignore the clear word of the Bible, instead to follow the Book of Mormon and the doctrines and covenants, to be initiated in the secret temple rituals, to wear holy underwear, to follow the present prophet and to raise a family within Mormon marriage. The only way for a woman to be raised on the last day is to have totally pleased your husband during this life. We could go on all morning tracing what it means to be a saint in the religions of this world. But they all have a common theme. They are doable. Men and women can achieve sainthood if they try hard enough, if they do the right things. They are religions of the law, and the world loves them, and they call them holy. But to be a saint in the Lutheran Church is, first of all, to be 100% a sinner, a sinner who hungers and thirsts for righteousness that is not his own, but God's free gift in Christ Jesus. 
100% sinner, declared 100% saint by the Father in the flesh and blood of Jesus, reborn by the Holy Spirit in the Word and Sacrament. This makes no sense to the world. It's a mystery. Therefore, let us turn away from our worldly sense of thinking and learn the mystery of sainthood. True saints are born of God, but unknown to the world. True sainthood is not man-made. It's God breathed in water born. Scripture is clear when it teaches us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law condemns us as sinners. We have not feared, loved, and trusted of the only true God, the triune God, with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. It isn't the law that is at fault. It's our sinful nature, inherited from our first father, Adam, conceived and born in sin. We cannot achieve sainthood by our own good works. Scripture is clear that we are by nature spiritually dead, blind, and enemies of God. We deserve nothing but hell. The good works that the world commends is worthy of calling us saints. The Lord God calls rubbish. Isaiah puts it this way. But we, like an unclean thing, in all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. We need true righteousness, not a man-made sham imagined goodness. Here's the mystery. Though we sin against the only true God, he seeks us out to save us, even while we were still sinners. Behold, St. John writes, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. A mystery is never fully uncovered. It becomes more wondrous the more you study and examine it. So does the mystery of God's love for us sinners. We rebelled. We justly deserved hell. But behold, the love the Father has bestowed on us. He calls us his own beloved children. John takes us back to our Lord Jesus' baptism in the Jordan, where the heavens were torn open, and God the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove, and God the Father spoke from heaven, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Now God the Father says the same of you, dear sinner. In the waters of your baptism, God the Father has declared you to be his own, he has clothed you in the perfect life of Jesus. He has washed you sinless in Christ's blood. He has joined you to his body. He declares you justified, not guilty, a saint. God the Holy Spirit breathes faith into your heart through God's word spoken. Never faith in yourself or faith in faith, but faith that clings to Christ Jesus alone. That see all that he has done and continues to do in this world through his church is done for you, the Lord God has elected you from eternity to be his own. Here's a mystery that offends the world. The world says, you can't know if you are going to be saved. A Christian in the church knows that she is a child of God, forgiven, declared a saint, sought by her loving father from eternity. St. Paul would put it this way in Romans chapter 8. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. How do you know that God is predestined to save you? You are baptized into Christ. He places you in his church. He justifies you through the forgiveness of sins spoken. He preserves you in your baptismal faith through the preaching of his word and the gifts of his sacraments until he brings you through death to life eternal. The world calls us fools for such a Christ-centered faith. It does not know us because it does not know God the Father. Here John condemns all false religions in this world that deny the Trinity. Apart from Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. There is no knowing the one true God. As our Lord himself tells you in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The mystery of sainthood 
is that while we are in this world, we are not of this world. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he prayed to God the Father for you, saying these words, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Behold the deep mystery of God's love for you, beloved. Now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. You are the beloved of the Lord. What belongs to Christ Jesus has become yours. What was yours, Jesus has taken into himself. And he has paid it for full, once and for all on the cross. Jesus became your brother fully human, fully God, that he might open for you the gate of heaven through his flesh and blood. The mystery of God becoming flesh, the mystery of Christmas, boggles our human mind. The world scoffs at the idea, but we know that it is a historical truth. Christ's physical resurrection from the dead is not a nice story. It is historically verifiable. It is truth. But to many, too lazy to examine the facts. They buy in the world's mockery as being wise and teaching about the gift we are given holy baptism our lord jesus tells us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and again jesus says he who believes in the son has everlasting life he who does not believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides in him see everlasting life is not something you earn It's a gift that's yours through the waters of baptism, the means by which God the Holy Spirit works Christ-centered faith in you, brought you to trust in God as your Father, who loves you so much that he sent his Son to die for you. Declared citizen of heaven, no longer can death frighten us. We know that as Jesus was in the resurrection on that first Easter morning, so we shall be on the day that he appears on Judgment Day. That day holds no fear for us according to faith. We look forward to these bodies being freed from sin, death, and corruption, and becoming fully human. And we shall see Jesus face to face forever in the beauty and joy of heaven. Why doesn't our Lord reveal the details of heaven and what we shall be like in greater detail? The Lord keeps it a mystery so that we tend to the work that he has called us to carry out here and now in our daily vocations. So the Christian saint serves their fellow human beings in love, unknown to the world, but known to God. They live their baptism in daily repentance. What does that mean? Daily we die to sin. We fight against our corrupt nature, our old Adam, exposed by the Ten Commandments. Daily we are made alive by the triune God through the word and water of our baptism. That is why the Christian begins and ends your day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, making the sign of the Holy Cross. As citizens of heaven, we have a hope that no pandemic, no disease, no cancer, nothing can ever take from us. For we read, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Coming to the Lord's table, we have a foretaste of the feast to come. The great mystery of our hope is expressed in the words of our liturgy. For at the Lord's table we feast with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven. At the Lord's supper, you sit at table with Jesus and all your loved ones who have fallen asleep. In this one holy Christian faith, saints have hope. For we know that God the Father controls history for the sake of the gospel. We have hope for we know that we are forgiven, that our Lord is working all things for our good. Filled with the hope of heaven, that baptism assures us that if we daily die to self and we rise to live for those in our other and our lives. The world mocks Christianity, saying, All Christians are concerned about is heaven and not making this world a better place. Such people are ignorant of history. It was Christians dying to self, living for others who founded hospitals, orphanages, schools instituted social changes to free slaves, protect the unborn and women. It was Christians, 
freed science from superstitions of Aristotelian philosophy to discover the great mysteries of the God who created life it was Christianity that blessed us with a great artist, musicians, scientists, theologians, and rulers. It was heavenly-minded saints filled with hope that gave all that they had to serve their fellow sinful human beings. Here is the mystery of sainthood, that as we daily die to self, we're filled with the hope of heaven. We rise anew, created in Christ to serve our fellow human beings in love through the vocations that our God has called us to labor in. See, for our work in the Lord is never in vain. So do you know any Lutheran saints? You are one, dear child. As your faithful parents and grandparents who walk before you are also ones who are now home in heaven. In our Augsburg Confession, Article 21, we put it this way. Our churches teach that the remembrance of saints may be commended to us so that we may imitate their faith and good works according to our calling. Thus the emperor may follow the example of David in waging war to drive the Turk out of his country. For like David, the emperor is a king. However, the scriptures do not teach us to pray to saints or to seek their help. For the only mediator, propitiation, high priest, and intercessor whom the scriptures set before us is Christ. He is to be prayed to. And he has promised to hear our prayers, such worship of Christ especially approves, namely that in all afflictions he be called upon. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, 1 John 2, 1. Dear sinners, declared saints by your Father, rejoice in the mystery of sainthood that God the Father has bestowed upon us in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, who has given us his Holy Spirit, that we might trust in him through his word alone. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is above all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son, and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us. With good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you, to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, that faith in you may be strengthened, love towards others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth labors into your harvest, sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all in authority, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governing Legislature of this state, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure, for the maintenance of righteousness, the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, during the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. 
Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish, and labor, peril, or death, or any other adversity. Grant them courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth, nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger of body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, and from despair of your mercy and an evil death. In every time of trouble, Show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all men, especially to those who believe. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all awful occupations on land, sea, and air, to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls, and all our talents together with the offerings we bring before you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever things you have asked of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus always prays with and through the baptized. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that comes down from above that your word may not be bound, but have free course we preach to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. joining us for a video chapel this morning from Emanuel Lutheran Church in Tell City, Indiana. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us in person if you are able every Sunday morning. Our divine service begins at 10 a.m. We are located on the corner of 12th and Pestalozzi Street. Sunday school begins at 8.45 and we invite you to join us in searching the scriptures to see that Jesus is there to give you eternal life, to make sinners into saints through the forgiveness of sins in his blood. If you live further away from Tell City, check the links that are here supplied that you might find a church home near you. 
and rejoice to join with the angels and archangels, all company of heaven, with all the saints before us and with all saints around this world in gathering around Jesus where he comes to us as true God and true man, speaking real forgiveness in real water through his real word, in real bread and wine, giving us his flesh and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, life and salvation, filling us with his Holy Spirit that we might believe and know that God is truly our Father and we truly are his children.